welcome back to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Hui Lichuan, and joining me here are family law professionals Laura Torcia and Eva de Giammarino. Laura is a family mediator, and Eva is a family lawyer, and both have appeared in previous videos on mediation. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit more in the area of hiring mediators. I've often been asked this question, does a mediator have to be a lawyer? Maybe Laura, can you, can you start? Sounds good, thank you. Okay. Um, bottom line and the main takeaway is that no, uh, a mediator does not have to be um, a lawyer or any particular background. Um, so there are in fact many mediators, family mediators, uh, who have various backgrounds, anywhere from a legal background to psychology, social work, financial background, business, even marketing sometimes really. So uh, there's, a, there's a range of backgrounds that mediators uh, have. So they're not required in order to be a, a mediator. They're not required to, uh, to be a lawyer. And Eva? Yeah, so uh, Laura's absolutely right. Uh, you know, uh, to be a mediator in Ontario, there is no requirement that anybody has a law degree or that anybody that the mediator is called under the law of, uh, law of Ontario bar or any bar for that matter. So you don't have to be a lawyer, a specific lawyer trained to be a mediator. Um, Laura's absolutely right that you can be of any background persuasion. And I think that's what makes mediation great is that you can work with any professional based on, you know, what they bring to the table, their backgrounds, their experiences. And it doesn't just have to be one profession. I've been, um, uh, Somebody had uh, told me before that sometimes it could be a problem when a mediator is a lawyer. Can you maybe expand on that? Like, why would they say that? Why, why is it worse? Yeah. Laura's favorite topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think, I think that's a common question. Um, and so there's, there's a couple of school of thought there. One is that if you are a lawyer, um, you are mediating essentially through that lens, through the legal lens, you are going to be applying the legal lens to all mediations, so all family matters, um, which may or may not work with particular families and their issues. It may work in a property division, you know, complex financial issue, let's say, um, just because there is a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a higher requirement of understanding the, the, uh, the law in there. However, it may not work when we're talking about, you know, other issues, majority of other issues, such as, uh, you know, parenting, um, um, uh, support, uh, you know, schedules, things like that, emotional um, elements that are permeating that family's fabric. So there's, there's a little bit of, um, there's, there's a difference, there's a huge difference in terms of how it's applied, how the mediation style is applied. And in fact, the research has shown that um, a, a mediator who is a lawyer does, uh, um, does tend to apply more of what's called a rights-based approach to a particular mediation, right? So it's, it's, it's a different approach. And I think uh, families should understand that before they even, uh, they, they enter in, in, in a mediation. And Eva, do you have anything to add? Sure, I was going to add that, uh, you know, I think when someone is trying to determine what kind of mediator they wanna hire or, or what background they would prefer for their mediator, they have to consider a couple of things. The nature of the conflict, right and what they're looking to get out of it so if you are if you have a conflict like laura mentioned that is very emotional based that maybe has to do with a family situation right um such as you know conflict between a mother and a son or a conflict between parents that ha has to do about parenting the child right um it may actually serve you to have a mediator who has that type of ther therapeutic or parental background that type of knowledge to help you right if you are 
mediating over, let's say, you know, two commercial properties or two commercial businesses, right? And you're looking to enter into a contract because those businesses are going to merge. You may need a lawyer or a mediator that at least understands the business nature, right? Um, so I think it really has to do with the context of the nature of the conflict and what you're looking to get out of it. Are you looking, for example, parenting techniques to help your children? Are you looking to enter into a legal contract? Are you trying to sell something, right? Sell a business or uh, acquire something. And then you can maybe um, narrow it down from there. Oh, that makes so much sense. So basically, um, it really depends on the nature of your situation. And, mm -hmm. and so it's not just like, um, I want mediation and I'll go to the mediation store. <laughs> and right. just pick any mediation, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful. I can build on what Eva had mentioned. So, um, you know, in addition to the nature of the conflict, um, some families choose to work with a non-lawyer and I'm not really keen on the labeling of non in front of anything but with someone who does not have a legal background for various reasons so sometimes uh, the legal profession you know gets a bad rap sometimes you know uh, families feel that the cost is going to be exacerbated that they were going to be you know pinned against each other so they make a conscious choice to you to actually select a mediator who is not a lawyer so that's why you know when eva said it's great that we do have the variety of backgrounds is that it does then fill the need of that particular family in terms of what they feel it will be appropriate for them to work with So Eva, um, mediators are not regulated in Ontario. So then how, how would a client go about choosing a mediator who's qualified? Do you have any tips? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So absolutely right. Mediators in Ontario are not regulated. That means that anybody really can open a business and call themselves a mediator. So individuals looking to hire a mediator do have to be careful and do should do their due diligence before they hire someone. So one of the tips I always recommend is whether you want to have a mediator with a legal background or not, that's okay, right? We discussed that. Mm -hmm. um, but you sh they should have some type of mediation specific training. Just because someone went to law school or business school or nursing school or police academy does not mean that they have mediation training. That is a very specific type of training that a professional um, can get from universities, colleges, professional bodies throughout the country. So I would first look into their background and look for that professional designation or certification. Do you have any examples as to uh, some of these um, um, credentials? Like, um like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so for yeah. example, if you have a, if you, uh, to understand someone as a lawyer, you look for that JD title. Right. Now, so what kind of titles are we looking for when it comes to mediators? That's right. So uh, there are, and I know Laura knows a lot about this, so I'll, I'll punt it to her shortly. Um, but there are a lot of um, actual professional bodies that mediators can sign up with in Ontario that require those mediators to have a certain certification. So you can look up those bodies and I'll leave that to Laura because I know she knows a lot about them. But also the universities and colleges in our province have very robust mediation uh, programs. So for example, my certification is with York University. Um, University of Toronto, um, I believe George Brown College, they all offer certifications in mediation and alternative dispute resolution, which is sometimes what it's called. So you can look for that. And I know um, we have the professional bodies as well. Yes, some, some of the professional bodies, especially when they, um, um, uh, with respect to family, so family mediation, um, are uh, such as uh, OFM, so Ontario Association of Family Mediation. There's, uh, and that's uh, Ontario based, uh, mm -hmm. um, obviously. And um, there's uh, FM Canada, so that's uh, Canada wide, Family Mediation Canada. And uh, there's a newer one, uh, FIDRIO, so uh, Family Institute uh, of Dispute Resolution of Ontario, I believe it's, uh, it's the, so right now these three bodies, actually an ADRIO, so, um, Mm -hmm. um, also has a designation for family mediators. So in addition to the training that some of the uh, academic institutions are offering, uh, then 
these are certifying. So they're taking the training and they're requiring the mediators uh, in order to qualify to belong to these bodies uh, to have um, in a, you know, additional, additional training or additional mediations uh, under their belts, right? So you at the very least know that if they belong to one of those bodies, uh, it's not their first time they put up the shingle. Um, right. And not their first mediation. So that's usually a plus. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting. Well, and for our viewers, I'm going to have the links to um, all these um, uh, bodies uh, that uh, Lauren even mentioned below. So don't forget to check that out. Okay, so um, thank you so much for your um, helpful, helpful explanation. Um, and thank you everyone for watching. If you found this video helpful, please support us by giving us a like and sharing with others. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.